Good morning, good morning. How's everyone today? Good. <laughs> All right. Well, our lesson today is the raising of Lazarus. And we are in John eleven thirty eight through 44. Um, before I begin, uh, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Father God, we thank you always for the prayer that has gone forth, oh God. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father God, that in this time, Lord God, that you show yourself big, that it will be none of us but all of you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That a word will be conveyed to someone right now that will receive it. It shall grow root, Lord God, in their spirit. Hallelujah. And they will only not be a hearer, but a doer of that word. So, Father God, we just thank you this morning that all things come to our remembrance, Lord God, and that this lesson is orchestrated excellently to the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, as I stated, our lesson is the raising of Lazarus. And we're kind of continuing from last week's lesson, which, you know, they're always line upon line, precept upon precept. But in our last lesson, um, it was uh, Jairus' daughter and the bleeding woman. And basically, it was Jesus showing his deity, showing that he's all-powerful. You know, and that he is the orchestrator of life. Um, so I'm going to start with John 11, 38. Jesus, therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Well, we know that um, back then... Um, their graves were basically indentions in stone. They carved out um, a place for a body to be laid, and they put a stone in front of it. It was either you could walk in like that, or they made it to where you walked down into the cave. And um, um, at this cave, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Well, you know, <laughs> they were they were they were stone. Uh, the Bible, the, the story says that they were like lime. And what they did was they would carve a place for you in this line where they would lay your body. They would lay it vertically, or they would lay it horizontally. And they had other little rooms in there where other people might could come, on, you know, if they were just going to pay respects or what have you. But People that were well to do had this, you know. And if you didn't, you know, if you didn't have no money, you weren't being buried in a cave, because you had to have somebody pay somebody to go in there and, and dig this out. So it, it was a place where people that was very, you know, well known in the social life. Mm -hmm. um, Lazarus was buried there. Now, if you got you guys remember the story that. Lazarus' sister, when she put the perfume on Jesus' feet, and one of the disciples said, well, hey, you know, that's a year's salary that you're putting there. And Jesus was saying, well, you know, uh, I don't have the exact story there. He said, but you don't have me forever, so right. let me have this now. I right. won't be with you forever. So allow her to do this. Mm -hmm. So my point is that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they were not broke. They had some change, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> verse 33, verse, 39. excuse me. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to finish this because you started on it and we didn't, I just wanted to share it. It said, Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself. Now that groaning, as Jesus was approaching this cave where Lazarus lay, he was groaning within himself. Now that groaning that Jesus was doing was he was, um, the, the story tell us that it's called indignation, okay? Um, a sorrowfulness. What he was upset 
was about how Satan had caused so much, such a terrible thing in our lives mm-hmm. uh, about what Satan had brought the sin into our life. That's what he was mad about. He was groaning because he was mad about what Satan had done to the human lives. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's why you, the story says that he was groaning within himself. As you read it, you find out he was mad about what Satan had done to us through sin. Okay. Uh, verse 39, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, uh, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. So Mm -hmm. Jesus asked them to remove the stone, but Mary is like, why are you removing away the stone? He's Martha. He's been in there dead for four days now, and his body stink. Right. Okay, see, because Martha, and you got to realize, although Jesus had just raised, had just raised Jarvius' daughter from the dead, the word hadn't gotten around over there to Bethany that he had did that, because he had hadn't too long, he just did that in our last lesson, so they weren't all aware of his power, okay, mm-hmm. so they had, Martha and Mary had no idea that Jesus was about to raise mm-hmm. Lazarus from the dead. Because mm-hmm. you got to realize, Jewish ritual was that you do not, um, you don't disturb a dead body. It, it, it's, um, they call it um, a, a defile. Yes, you, do, you don't want a, a ritual defilement, mm-hmm. contact with the dead. So, you know, don't do that. That's a, that's a ritual defilement. Mm-hmm. To, to have contact with the dead. So Mary and Martha, they were thinking of that. They knew that the body, he had been dead for four days. They knew that in that hot sun over there, that the body had already started to decay. And they could not understand why he wanted them to roll the stone back. Okay? Right. right. Verse 40. And back then, let me say too, back then, most Jewish people did not embalm their people. Mm -hmm. You know, the Egyptian did, but the Jewish people didn't do that. Yes. Okay, verse 40, Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou would have believed, thou should have seen the glory of God. Okay. What Jesus is saying here, I done said it to you before, Mary. Mm Mm-hmm. Right here, he said, said I not unto thee? That meant I done said it to you before. Mm-hmm. That if thou wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God. So mm-hmm. if you would just believe, you would see the glory of God. Mm-hmm. But still, they had no idea yeah. about the resurrection of Lazarus. Yeah. That was the last thing they had thought about. Because you got to realize, they got to, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying, they could not fathom that. Right, so right. He had been dead for four days. They could not see him being raised from the dead. You know, this lesson here, have you ever watched a movie and you saw something in the beginning of it and you quite didn't understand it, but then as you watch the, the whole movie, you get to the end and you see that same part mm-hmm. where they show you the end of the movie at the beginning? Mm-hmm. Have you ever saw a movie like that? Well, this is what Jesus just did right here with raising Lazarus. Mm -hmm. He showed us the end in the beginning. We weren't quite in the beginning, but we're we're somewhere in the the New Testament there, in the Mm -hmm. beginning of the New Testament. He showed us the whole meaning, the whole purpose of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that is the whole purpose that we have hope for, and that is resurrection. He showed us right here the end that he do have that he is the resurrection of life, you know, by raising him. And this is what we all hope for. You know, after we're gone, we pray and we know that we will be. I'm not gonna say we we have confidence and faith <laughs> by being Jesus' children. Right. That we have faith that we will be resurrected right. in Christ. Right. Um right. That's where we should be, you guys. I'm going to be honest. You know, a lot of people probably don't really look at the magnitude of that. 
you know, as we as we deliver our lessons, I I ask myself a lot of questions when I come across things. And like I just said, I don't think a lot of people really, really understand the magnitude of the word. And where, just like Deacon said, that is the culmination of everything, that we should believe that we will be resurrected and be with Jesus and God, that we will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of us growing. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a part of the maturity in faith mm -hmm. that we have. We, get, we must have that faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we study the word of God, it gives it to you. He mm -hmm. says, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. So as we study the word of God, my faith has increased. I've always accepted Jesus as my savior. But as I have began to teach and learn and study more, I saw his love even more. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a Sunday to go by that, that I don't learn something out of this lesson. You know, for example, I was telling my wife, you know, about this lesson here. What really stuck out to myself and my wife was that it's not just um, it's not just the raising of Lazarus that we see here. Do you know what, what is so vital here that, that we're going to learn is that he wants all glory to go to God. He wants, as we're going to get to it here, he wants all glory to go to his father. So raising Lazarus here, he says, and while he's raising them in front of these people, you know, he wants them to, to accept him that God has sent him, but he give all glory to his father. And everything that Jesus does, he gives glory to the father. He don't seek none for himself. He seeks it for the father. Okay, verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Okay. Jesus hasn't said anything. He just, when he, when, he, when he started praying, he said, Father, I thank you. Well, he hadn't mm -hmm. prayed. He, did, he didn't with a loud voice say, oh, God in heaven, raise Lazarus. Raise him up this day. No, he said, I thank you. So therefore, he knew that he was going to do it mm -hmm. because he thanked him before he even did it. And if you notice here in verse, in the next verse, he says, uh, he says, uh, <clears throat> 41, he said, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Verse 42. Um, and I knew that thou, and I knew that thou hearest me always. You hear him? He said, first, I thank you. I thank you that thou has heard me, and I know that you hearest me always. Those were, that is a prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. he, he knows that the Father hears him, and he said, I know that you hear me always. He said, now, I'm going to say this out loud, mm -hmm. what I'm going to say, not for myself, but I'm going to say it for the people that's standing around here mm -hmm. so that they would know that thou has sent me. Okay. See, I want to make an important point. Yes. He didn't speak it out loud then his prayer, but you know that Jesus prayed before all of this transpired. So now he's saying, okay, I'm going to speak it out loud for the purpose of these people that are around me. And, and also, um, I would like to show the unity between the father and the son. Mm -hmm. See, because they are connected spiritually in the mind mm -hmm. jesus know what the father is thinking and the father know what the son is thinking mm -hmm. so there necessarily didn't have to be a verbal conversation there because he knows the heart of his son mm -hmm. okay that's so that's, that's why he says i know that thou's hear me and thou always hear me and after that he said arise lazarus with a loud voice he didn't cry out loud for the power or the ability mm -hmm. for Lazarus. He just commanded him and said, arise Lazarus mm -hmm. with a loud voice. 
Okay, verse 42, he says, And I knew that thou hear me always, but because of the people which stand by, I, uh, I say it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 43, And when thus he had spoken, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Okay, mm -hmm. would you look up, please, uh, and if you guys would like to, John 5, 28, and 29. Mm -hmm. it, it just confirms here, you know, something that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. 28. Okay, John 5, 28 reads, marvel not at this. Okay, he says, marvel not at this. Don't be amazed by this. Mm -hmm. I've done this before. Don't be in awe by it. Go ahead. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Oh, you hear that? Uh -huh. All that which are in the grave shall hear his voice. Mm -hmm. When he called to us, just as he called to La um, Lazarus. Lazarus and Lazarus rose, just as when he said, let there be light. And he spoke it. You know, I don't care if your body had been decomposed for 40 years, 100 years, 2,000 years. When he calls to us and says, rise, Fred Carter, you know, we're going to rise. We're going to rise. No matter where you are in this world. And, you know, my, old, my mind got to think. I said, well, what if they've been incarcerated? I said, well, Lord, them ashes going to have to come back together. Because, you know, a lot of time people would do the incarceration where they burn. Is that what it's called, incarceration? No, not incarceration. Not, um, I'm trying to think of it, too. When they burn when the, they burn the body. body. Cremated. Thank you. They're cre incarcerated. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. But when they're when they are cremated and their bodies are ashes, you know, and sometimes people are, I'm gonna throw them off the sea, or I'm gonna spread them off the cliff, or you know, those those ashes are they're gonna reform. They're gonna come back. They got to. Okay. Read the verse 29. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Okay. Those that have done good, when Jesus called on that day, they will rise and come forth to the resurrection of life. So that's what he's saying there is those that believe in me, mm -hmm. that die, they're going to rise again to the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Of damnation, mm -hmm. judgment, damnation. Those that have done, those that did not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, mm -hmm. they're going to rise too, but to judgment. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he's not going to judge us. We're just, we're just going to go on up and we're going to heaven. But, but those non-believers will be judged. Okay, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to show you guys that in John 28 and 29. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, verse 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Okay, it was a it was a customary thing that when they died, they would bound your feet in grave clothes or grave cloth. You know, they probably just wrapping them up. Mm -hmm. You know, like how you see a mummy or what have you. Yeah. They they're wrapping their feet up in grave cloth. They described it. They wrapped their hands up in grave cloth. Mm -hmm. They put uh, napkins and what have you over their face. When the Jewish people prepare their body, there was there was about 72 pounds of cologne. Uh, I, I won't say cologne, but I'm going to say myrrh mm -hmm. or, or these good smelling oils or what have you mm -hmm. that they put on the body but before they put them in those graves mm -hmm. in the caves they put all this cologne not cologne frankincense. but but they frankincense and myrrhs and uh -huh. oils i mean the story tell us that it was about equal to 72 pounds worth of of um you know oils and frankincense and myrrhs and that was to keep the body from stinking because those bodies would smell so bad in that hot sun 
that, mm-hmm. you know, that's what they did when they prepared the body. But yet, when they called to Lazarus, uh, and, and he that was dead came forth, bound hands and feet. They were tied together, and his face bounded with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Let him go. Isn't that something? Now, you got to realize Martha and them, you, can you imagine the amazement of Martha and Mary mm-hmm. when Lazarus arose? But also, we know that there uh, a lot of those people there, they believed. Mm-hmm. When they saw that, they started to believe. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, we know not everyone always believe in what they see. Now, we have people that was there to witness that. Because you, you remember, there's always mourners. Mourners everywhere. Well, there was people that went back to the Pharisees, okay? They went back to the Pharisees, and they told the Pharisees what Jesus had done, mm-hmm. okay? Um, I'm going to read this. Okay, you read that right there? Okay. But other witnesses of the signs went to the Pharisees and reported what had happened. Then the Pharisees, in desperation, sought to kill Jesus. They even tried to put Lazarus to death in order to destroy the evidence of for the miracle. Now, you see there? After Jesus had raised him from dead, mm-hmm. the Pharisees plotted to kill him in desperation. Mm-hmm. They even wanted to kill um, Lazarus. I'm always putting Lar- Lazarus. Lazarus. <laughs> they even wanted to kill Lazarus to um to hide the miracle that Jesus had done. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking they said, well, see there, you know, he died, you know, uh, a day after he so-called was raised, or you know, just to discredit him. Right. I mean, right. you're gonna plot to kill Jesus and kill what Jesus had done. Mm-hmm. They were plotting to kill Lazarus mm-hmm. again and plotting to kill Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, we were um you know, it's funny how the Lord always gives you something extra. And as we were getting ready, you know, we were listening to Dr. David Jeremiah this morning. And he was talking about Paul, okay? You guys remember, remember last week, week, two weeks ago maybe, we were talking about uh, uh, Onimus. He was Onimus. He was that slave that ran to Rome to get away from his slave master. Mm-hmm. Remember, he ran, he met Paul while he was in the Roman prison, mm-hmm. and Paul persuaded him to go back to his slave owner mm-hmm. and ask for forgiveness. But it was the right thing to do that even though he ran away, he was still a slave. Mm-hmm. And by and by Roman law, he was gonna always be a slave until his slave master released him. You know, mm-hmm. that master had the authority to kill him, cut off his arm, do whatever he chose to him because mm-hmm. he was his property. Was but his property. Paul encouraged the man to go back. You guys remember that? I think we taught that just two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. My point is, is that, you know, Paul was, while he was in prison there, he was in prison there for two years. Okay. He had guards chained to him. While he was in prison, he was chained to a guard, okay? And so, therefore, even though Paul was in prison, guess what? He was still preaching the word. Because every six hours, they're changing them guards. So, although he was locked up for two years straight, guess what? He was still sharing sharing the word of God with each Roman soldier that he was chained to. Okay, now in the end here, in the end of Paul's letter, in the end of Paul's writing, he started to say that even the people that was in the, uh, let's say, who was ever the head of the Roman Empire, Mm -hmm. whoever the people that worked for him, he called them saints. Okay, Mm -hmm. now for him to call them saints, that means they had been converted. Okay, so even though Paul was in prison for those two years, 
chained to a guard. Every six hours, the guards are changing. He was sharing the word with them. He was sharing the word. A multiply, divide six into 24 hours, multiply that time 12 months. Can you imagine how many guards he shared the word with over those two years, getting a different guard every six hours chained to him? And all he did was share the word with them. Okay, so my point is, Paul says, even though I go through all this, he go through it with joy for the spreading of the gospel. The gospel was still being spread while he was in prison, right. locked up. Okay? Right. I got the thing. And all of this is for the glory of God. That's mm -hmm. my point. The glory of God. Mm -hmm. I thought about Pastor Johnson. I thought about Sister Kitty. Um, Amaya. Mm -hmm. I thought about my wife. Mm -hmm. My mother almost died. The, the doctors tell her that we did not expect you to live. And it's just a miracle that you're here. Right. My wife just survived cancer twice. Okay, sometimes things happen to people that, that we just don't understand. We don't know why. Okay, where is it, sweetheart, that um, uh, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, Thank you. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5 and 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And I was thinking to myself, remember I told you earlier that we want to, he always give God glory, no matter what. Give God glory. And uh, where's that? Philippians, where he says, In everything give God thanks. In everything. So I said, Why are we giving him thanks in everything? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. hey, I lost my house. I'm not going to say thank you, Lord, that I lost my house, but I'm going to say thank you, Lord, that I know you're going to provide me and give me a home. Okay, so you're thanking him in the midst of this trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, now then we're giving glory to God now. We're thanking God in the midst of this trouble. Mm -hmm. And then when that answer arrives and we get that new home, Brother mm -hmm. Robert, we're saying, thank you, Lord. Yes. See here, we're giving him thanks in the midst of okay. all things. And it's all about glorifying the Father. Yes. See, so that was this bright light that went off in my head during this lesson is that mm -hmm. we give God thanks. In all things, mm -hmm. he wants his glory, and therefore we must give him his glory mm -hmm. in all things, mm -hmm. in the midst of it, and when we come out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, you know, the answer to my own question was, why are we giving thanks in all th in all things? Means when I'm in trouble, when I'm sick, when I'm broke, when I'm heartbroken, when I'm lonely, when I have no peace. Mm -hmm. Why am I thanking him for that? Because I'm thanking him because I know he's going to bring me out. There you go. There you go. We have to have the faith to know that he's going to bring us out of it. That's right. you got to continue to have that faith. And what, and what pleases? Faith. 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 For so it is impossible be done. to please God without faith. Yeah. So we must continue to have the faith, even when it don't look like things are going our way. We say, Lord, it don't look like things are going my way, Father God, but I thank you yeah. because I know you're going to bring me out of it. I know tomorrow will be joyful. Yeah. So you will bring me through this storm. Yeah. Remember when we're in that storm, Jesus say, oh, ye of little faith, mm -hmm. speak to that mountain. Mm -hmm. But you speak to it with authority yeah. and with the faith of God. Yeah. And he says, you have the ability to move mountains. Yeah. We have all power over the power of the enemy. So we have the victory. Yeah. We just have to know it, believe it, and use it. it. And believe it. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you.